I got some coffee. And I have questions. 12 of them. Yep, 12 questions. So get on in here. We are going to kick off this question and answer day with uh I gotta pull this stuff back. It's it's itchy. It's itchy. My hair is just I guess it's really dry out and I've got flyaway hair. So come on in, folks. Where are my people? Come on in here. Come on in. There goes the garage door. Jimmy's out there. He wants to ride to town. He likes his Mountain Dew. he got a big old Mountain Dew in his pocket. Y'all, soda is poison. So come on in. Come on in. Let me turn that off. Let's see. Let's, let's, let's get a little devotional in. You want to? March the 9th. Yep. If we could take just one little peek into heaven, our longings to go there would soar. Well, I've already taken a peek into heaven. The Bible shows us streets of gold. Just, just, I see it in my mind's eye. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, verse 20. The Lamb's Book of Life. So y'all get on in here. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. While people, dear Father in heaven, Please give me wisdom and knowledge and patience and kindness to help answer these questions. I know sometimes, Lord, I get bossy and I repent of that. But thank you, Lord, for giving me the tools I need to help my ladies navigate taking care of their homes and make some good parents, make some good people good wives, good husbands. Lord, we thank you for everything you do for us. Thank you for my friend who got a great um, a, a great message after her colonoscopy yesterday. There was, in, there was nothing wrong. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. These things we ask. And we praise you for, in Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. Okay, let's get started. I'm going to have to tie my hair back. I can just tell it already. Where's my brat? It's going to drive me nuts until I do. It's just so fly away. I got to find my little humidifier. And hook it up. Okay. It's not tied, it's not up, but it's tied back and it's not gonna drive me nuts. <laughs> anyway, folks, get on in here. First question. Are you ready? We got 94 people in here. Good morning, everybody. Where's everybody from? Tell us where you're from, and then post what's for dinner. So you can get some people some. I made a good dinner last night. I mean to tell you, I, I've been craving goulash, but Robert's not real fond of tom tomatoes. But I found a can of crushed tomatoes with basil in it in my pantry. Yeah, I went shopping in my pantry for dinner. And I, I grabbed that, it was a big can, and then I grabbed a small can of like Chef Boyardee pasta sauce. It wasn't Chef Boyardee spaghetti, but Robert had gotten this little can and it had enough Italian seasoning and I cooked a package of um, sausage. Jimmy Dean or some kind of sausage that was hot. <laughs> and I cooked that up. I made, I cooked a, a pan of pasta. 
just a whole box of ziti pasta and cooked it and let it cool. I cooked it a little, two minutes less than what the box said to do because I was going to stick it in the oven and let it get all bubbly. And, and then, bam, put it all together in a casserole dish, put some mozzarella cheese on top and heated it up and had some garlic bread and we had a lovely meal, a lovely meal. And what did it cost? Probably like a dollar fifty nine, three dollars for the the pos for the sauces and maybe another dollar. We had dinner for like five bucks. Five bucks. Cook right out of the pantry. Right out of the pantry. So let's get going. First question. Question number one. Question number one. Could you please explain why your calendars are 17 months? Seems like it would be easier if they were either 12 or 24 months. Well, folks, we procrastinate. Yeah. And school starts in the United States in August. So a lot of people like to have a school calendar that goes right along with the school, but I know you. I know you better than you know you. And I know you're gonna procrastinate. So this is why our calendar starts in August and you've got August, September, October, November, and December to buy a new calendar for next year. Right now we're in 2023. Our next calendar is going to be our 2024 calendar. And it's going to start in August and we will start selling it in uh, probably June. Now, why do we start selling it in June? Because people are already scheduling things into 2024. So we give you, isn't it better to live with a little grace than to be hampered with a small window to get things done. You got five months. You may get a little extra money here. You may, you know, you know, at Christmas, when it's time to get a new calendar, you already have it. And all you got to do is switch them out. Okay. So we're not ever going to have a 24 month calendar. That would be, that would be, I can't imagine having a 24 month calendar, but we have a 17 month calendar and I am thankful for that. And I like the way it works. You got it? It's to make it easier on you. Question number two. Question number two. I've been following you for years, off and on, using tips here and there. I recently retired and am trying to declutter, but find myself moving stuff from room to room. What am I doing wrong? You're moving stuff from room to room. You have to make a rule that stuff is not going to go back into the room you take it, you've taken it from. It either has to find a new home or it has to go away. Do you hear me? Are you listening? Turn on those ears. Don't say, oh, that's not going to work for me. Turn on those ears and let's get stuff out of it. You can't organize clutter. Say that with me. You can't organize clutter. You're trying to hold on to this clutter because of feeling, because you have, you're living like you're a poor person. You may be a challenged financially person, but when you're living like a poor person, you're going to say, I'm going to need that later. You, you know, we've all been raised by somebody who lived through the Great Depression. 
My grandmother did. My mother was born right after it. That Great Depression put this depression mentality into people where they thought they always needed to hold on to something. I might need that one day. I better hold on to it. Yet, you have so much stuff that you don't have a place for it. So let's take some, I got to turn my phone over. It keeps beeping. Uh, <clears throat> I may have to turn it off. It's been blowing up this morning. So you got to get rid of stuff. Right now we're going through a 40 bag and 40 day challenge. Start today. You don't have, you didn't have to start with us when we started it on, um, at the beginning of Lent. You can start right now. Get rid of 40 bags of stuff, but stop moving it from one place to another. You're not going to make your home easier to clean when you do that. You need to, to bless others with your abundance and let this stuff go. Do you hear me? You're not even going to realize what you've, what you've gotten rid of. You just have to get it out of your house so that you can breathe. Okay. Question number three. I don't know how I'm going to do four and five. <laughs> Any advice on living with someone who is a perfectionist and chronically finds fault with everything I do? It causes me to have a hard time flying Sometimes I get depressed from his criticism. Well, guess what? You're the best at tuning things out. You really are. I got to have a Kleenex. You are the best. So just ignore him. Yeah, that's, a, that's the best thing to do in my book. Or maybe agree with him. Or maybe apologize and say, you know, you're right. I should have done that a different way. But, you know, if you think I can't do it, then maybe you should step in and do it. That'll really get them going. But guess what? You're never going to please them. Just do it your way and be done with it. It gets done. It doesn't matter how it gets done as long as it gets done. But don't let it get you down. And if you feel like you're getting depressed over something, Rebuke it. Rebuke the demon of criticism that's coming on you. But you, you don't have to accept it. So rebuke it in the name of Jesus and let it go. So do not allow his criticism to bring you down. Because it, it, it shouldn't, you shouldn't hurt yourself that way. When you're flying, finally loving yourself, what people say about you, what people uh, think about you, what, what criticism they throw at you goes in one ear and out the other. And you just sing and dance and play. Don't let them know uh, how, don't let them know. There's a song, Ryan, I think it's Ryan Shoup, Dream Big. Don't let them know that they've won. Don't let them know. The best thing you can do for somebody who has these perfectionistic, and you're the worst. You have the mo most perfectionistic tendencies of anybody. But you just keep them to yourself and beat yourself up with it. Now, somebody else is beating you up. It's, it's time to just go with the flow. Do what you got to do. Take care of your home where they have no reason to criticize. And they'll still find a reason. But you will be blessed for it. You keep your tongue. And the best way to shut somebody up that's criticizing is just to nod your head and go on with what you're doing. My sister has a book Out of the Darkness Coming Through Depression. 
check it out. It's on Amazon. And it's by Ken Hartley and my sister, Patty Barnes. Check it out. Thank you. It was driving me nuts and I just didn't want to be messing with it through the whole show. Somebody complimented my hair being pulled back. Sometimes it's all about comfort, you know? Okay, let's get on to question number four. Question number four. I don't know what I'm going to do when I get to six, you know? Can you teach me how to keep my car clean? Not just free of stuff, but pretty and clean like it was when it was new. Well, we have some great tools for that. We had the multi wand. We have the rubber scrubber. We have purple rags. Justin uses a dozen of these rags every time he washes his truck. He uses them like chamois cloths. But you can get one of them and you wash the truck and you get a bunch of others and you dry the truck. But your multi one, let me pull this out. This is a great tool for cleaning vehicles. It gets up on top of the roof. It's, yeah, it, you can, it cleans windows. It does, it does the dashboard. But you're not going to get your car, unless you spend three hours detail cleaning your car, you have got to um, take baby steps and do it. Just baby steps. Maybe you run it through the car wash. But just don't, don't beat yourself up. Get the clutter out of your car. Don't eat in your car. I've got a list of 10 things not to do in your car. And one of them is not eat in your car. Now, you can have a bottle of water in there, but I wouldn't have a Coke in there, Coca-Cola. I wouldn't do that because if you spill it, it's sticky and nasty. Even if it's dyed, it's sticky and nasty. So Justin's going to put together a little clean car video today. He said he looked over these questions. He said, "You know, I can do a little. I can do a little video." So stick around. He's going to be posting it later today or tomorrow, because tomorrow is clean out your car day. Every Friday is clean out your car day. Now you might not be able to run it through a car wash. Or, but if it's a pretty day outside, get the kids outside with purple rags and a bucket of hot soapy water and just wash away. That could be a great family fun thing to do on Saturday is wash cars. Okay, next question. Number five, number five. How can I defeat perfectionism that stops me from starting your routines? I still haven't shined my sink and I've been following you for months. I'm trying to be still and not say what I want to say. What I want to say is go shine your sink. Stop rebelling against something that you have seen and heard that works. You're rebelling because of something inside of you says that I don't want to get out of this clutter and chaos. You know, you need to rebuke that feeling. You need to rebuke it right now. In the name of Jesus, rebuke that feeling of rebellion. There, I mean, we got people who haven't shined their sink ever. They don't know, they don't think it's going to do any good. But I'm here to tell you, go shine your sink. It's going to make a huge difference in your home. It will. And you'll get up in the morning and you're going to be blown away by how wonderful your kitchen looks. So go shine your sink. Even if you do nothing but put dishes in the dishwasher and walk, wipe it out with a dry towel. That's, that's essentially what I do every day. 
the shiny sink one-on-one, it's not that hard. If you've got some um, little disinfecting wipes that have bleach them, just wipe the sink out. Rinse it out and dry it out. You're, you're overthinking shining the sink. And if you don't want to follow me and you're not going to do, if, you don't, if you're not going to do what we're saying, go find somebody else to follow. I'm serious. Hit that unsubscribe button. But if you want to have success, you're going to have to get up off your bottom and do something. So go shine your sink. This is, a, this is an action channel. We're not going to sit around and you can do it and listen to me. You can do it and listen to me. So go, the person who wrote this, you need to go shine your sink right now. It's a commitment. That gets the ball rolling. But that demon of rebellion is saying, oh, that's not going to work. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Kick that nasty little demon off your shoulder in the name of Jesus and get in there and shine your sink. When somebody, when something eggs at you like that, do what you need to do to fight the sin. Somebody was saying in the chat, I woke up to a shiny sink and it was wonderful. I did too. I love it. Number six. So how am I going to do six? Six. Here we got it. Six. Will you tell me which tool is best for cleaning blinds? Well, we have three tools that you can use to clean blinds. If your blinds are clean, a daily flicking with the feather dust duster will keep will keep the dust from building up on them. It's just that simple. If your blinds are a little bit dirty, you can use the multi wand to wipe across the blinds. And you can use this wet, but you need to get the loose dust off, wet or dry. If they're so dirty that you need to wash them in the bathtub and take them down, that that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. If you're going to take them down, I would just save up and buy a new one once a week. And do one a week until you, instead of going out and buying, you know, 15 new blinds, buy one a week. But our purple rags do a great job of washing these blinds. They're clumsy. I mean, the, the blinds are clumsy to mess with. And I mean, you could take them outside and hose them down, but you're still going to have to wipe that greasy buildup off the blinds themselves. So just be aware. We got the tools for it. And they're on sale, most of them. Okay, number seven. Number seven. I got this down pat. Look at this. How do I know what clothes to keep and what to declutter? Well, you know, we got clothes in our closet that we've had 20 years, maybe even since we graduated from high school. Those clothes, other than being for spirit day at school, bell-bottom jeans and fringed vests, that was popular in my day. Uh, other than being for that, you're not going to wear them out in public. You're not going to wear them out in public. So let's... If it doesn't fit, it needs to go away. It needs to bless someone else with it. If you never liked it anyway, it needs to go away. If it's if you've got it piled in a basket in the bottom of your closet, it needs to go away because you haven't worn it in years. Uh, one good thing to do 
maybe at the beginning of a month, at the beginning of a season. We're coming up on spring in just a few days. We'll, it'll be springtime. And we've got winter clothes that we haven't worn this year. Are you going to wear them? I don't know. Because winter's just about over. Turn all the hooks in your closet that go over the rack like this. Turn them around backwards so that you have to actually work hard to get that hook off of the off of the rod, your clothes rod in your closet. And then after a month, you'll see what you've worn because when you put it back, you put it back right. Yeah, it's a good way to know what you wear and what you don't wear. And we, to go in there and pull everything out of your closet, that's, that's not our way. Go in there and pull out five things. If you did five things every day, at the end of five days, you'd have 25 items that you haven't worn in years out of your closet. 25 items, that could be that many i that that much room in your closet to make room for what you do love and what you do wear okay so keep decluttering those closets we have so many clothes that we don't love are we forgotten about okay question number Eight. How am I going to do this? Five. I'll put three fingers there and five there. Question number eight. I've heard you say that words hurt and strangle children. I still feel hurt by the words my parents said when I was young. How do I declutter those mean words that hold me back from flying? Hmm. I'm not even going to say this next part. She says she's, she feels blank and blank. I'm not going to reinforce that. So when you hear those negative voices coming up, sometimes you can take what they're saying, put it on a note card, get an old aluminum pie pan, and go outside and set it fire. And then the next time you hear those words, you say, delete, 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 and then turn it around to something positive. You've got to nip those negative voices in the bud, and you got to do it as soon as you hear it. And say, you're not doing that to me anymore. You're not here. You're gone. Most of them are probably already uh, gone to meet their maker. But let go of that negativity, those words, and say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. And your words aren't going to hurt me another day. I'm a grown woman, or I'm a grown man, and I don't have to listen to you. And ask Jesus to take it away. Rebuke those, those negative things you're hearing just evil and let it go let it go you know sing sing from frozen the let it go song or oh Engelbert Humperdinck sang a song please release me please release me from those negative thoughts they're they're in there and they come up fill your head with good stuff I am a good person I am not lazy. Anything you say after I am, that's a power message. You can do this. You really can. You don't have to walk around with those negative voices peppering your life every single day and keeping you beaten down. Rebuke them and then turn them around and say something you become your own parent at this time. You're reinforcing the good stuff. Try it. Write it on a piece of paper and burn it and say, you're not torturing me anymore. Go where you belong. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. <sighs> Question number nine. 
Number nine. Let's do number nine. Now, when we get up to 10 and 11 and 12, that's going to be good. Here's number nine. A whole hand and four fingers. Number nine. Number nine. What's the best book for me to learn about the Fly Lady system? It's not a book. It's an email. An email that comes out every single day. Emails that come out every single day. We do something weird with email. Nobody else does it. People do marketing with email. We do behavior modification. Now, if you wanted a book to hold, which is why we have a book, get Sync Reflections. It starts you out. The, we don't Right now, we don't have any uh, chaos to clean in 31 days, but we will have by the end of the month. That's another good book to start with. But we got a whole fly, we got a whole playlist on YouTube that's the 31 baby steps. Y'all, you don't have to be stuck in you don't have to be stuck. Fill your head with good stuff. Listen to my videos. Read my emails. When I get into your noggin right here, you're not going to be hearing those past voices going back to the last question. You're going to be hearing my voice. You're going to be loving the reinforcement that I give you of good things, of good things. <clears throat> question number 10. Okay. Number 10. <laughs> how can I donate to your work? Well, if you've got all our tools, the, the best way to support us is to buy something from the fly shop. But if you have them already and you don't want to add to your clutter and you don't want to add to your clutter, then here's what you do. You, there's a donate button at the top of our homepage, flylady.net. It's right beside, get our emails. It's right there beside it. It's in the fly shop where you can donate and you can pick the amount. It starts with $1. Every dollar counts. We thank you for donating, but we don't expect it. But we love you because you do. We love you anyway, but thank you so much for supporting us. Okay. We got three more questions. Okay, number 11. This is 11. <laughs> 11. Will you make something like a Hallmark movie about your life, the routines, and all the lives you have changed? I don't expect to be doing that. Do you know how much money it takes to make a movie? Do you, do you know? It's millions of dollars. I don't have millions of dollars. If I had millions of dollars, I wouldn't be making them. That that seems like it's braggadocious. I don't, I'm not going to be bragging about what God put me here to do. I'm going to give God all the glory, not me. This is the calling he put on my life when I was in heaven with him. Before I was ever born, he had a calling on my life. And I, I never knew what it was until I got to be about 43 years old and things just opened up. But everything I've ever done prepared me to be fly lady. Yeah, everything. So I'm not, I'm not going to be making a movie about my life. If you know somebody who makes movies and wants to make a movie about my life story, that's you go for it. But I'm not going to do it. That's not who I am, but I'd be willing to, <laughs> to help a little. Number 12. How am I going to do 12? One and two. <laughs> 12. I need a dry erase board. That's what I need. A little dry erase board. My sweet darling's home. Okay, my sink is a cast iron porcelain sink. Is there any way to make it shine? 
you know, I had a 25 year old stainless steel sink and I scrubbed it. I used, it was stainless steel. So I could use a, a, a steel wool pad on that sink. You got a porcelain sink, shine it, use shiny sink 101 to get it good and clean. And then I always recommend getting some car wax. Yeah, maybe it's floor wax that you've used on your floors. We don't do that anymore, but maybe it's, but I, I bought a bottle of Meguiar's car wax. It's a liquid wax and you just put it all over your sink and you let it dry. And then you take a purple rag and buff it off. And you know, you got a pretty, you know, the sink is clean. You know, it's shining. Even if it's not shining, it's shining because it's empty. And here's the last question, number 13. 13, 13, right here, 13. I don't have a lot of money. How can I build a pantry if I'm on food stamps? Well, many months ago, I would have said that's going to be really hard to do because most people don't draw a lot of, lot in food stamps if they're they're getting SNAP or something like that. And I heard a testimonial from Marie Hart at Homestead Hart. And she's been she's been preaching ever since I've been following her for two years that to build a pantry, to grow your own groceries. Well, some people can't do that if they live in the city. They may have a balcony where they could put some plants out there, but it's not going to produce a lot. Well, this one girl, young mother of four, decided she wanted to be prepared if she lost her job or, or whatever was going on in her life. She wanted to have a stocked pantry. So she started, um, instead of having processed foods, she started cooking a pot of beans and a pot of rice and the kids would eat the beans and rice. And so she kept it really simple. And for about three, four, five months, um, she turned a bedroom that was her oldest son and put him in the room with his brother and turned that bedroom into a pantry. She was determined. She was determined. So she would start building her pantry with cans of food, soups, stews, pasta sauces, all these things, cans of food. And then she started buying dried beans, dried rice, dried pasta, and she started stocking up just with She's feeding her family, but with the basics. But then she started building this pantry that she could rotate things in and out. And, you know, she sent this beautiful picture of this room with shelves all around it. She turned this small, I, I had a small little bedroom when I was uh, a senior in high school. And she turned it into a pantry. She did it with her ingenuity and her determination to not be be afraid because she had food in her pantry. Her children thought she was nuts. They thought they were starving, but they weren't because she was feeding them well. She fed them well. And I've been watching this guy. I don't know if it's, I think it's on Facebook. But he's been making, he's been making fresh pasta and it takes egg yolks and flour. And he's been making some of the most beautiful pasta I've ever seen in my life. Beautiful pasta. And it's just, there's a lot of things we can do if we will learn to cook. If we'll learn to make a pot of rice cook beans, um, and get some seasonings in our house. Our, those things taste awful because you don't put any seasonings in them. I can't cook if I don't have an onion. So I've got a canister of dried onions if I need to. 
I have a canister of uh, not a canister. I, I got in a new uh, a new bag of whipping cream. It's dried, but I can make cream out of it for for soups, for uh, making sauces. Learn how to make a pan of biscuits. You just take some flour. Self, I like self-rising flour. A little bit of oil. And some buttermilk. And you can make buttermilk easily. But you can use plain milk too. Look at your sales at your grocery store. The one you go to most of the time. I saw somebody who made breakfast sandwiches from the Dollar Tree with English muffins and that sort of thing. Now you need to have a freezer to stock to, to stock stuff like that, but you can make biscuits with dried stuff in your house. Make make wonderful egg and cheese biscuits. So where there's a will, there's a way. You just got to want to do it. You got to you got to see a need and start building to that that need even if it's only buying 5 cans a week. 5 cans a week or 5 boxes of pasta. I mean, I at one time in my life I couldn't I I couldn't afford anything. So I lived on dried pasta. It was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. So y'all, build your pantry. You'll be glad you did. Because the food you put in your pantry now is, is going to save you in the long run, save your sanity, save your family. Stop buying prepackaged meals. Those are expensive. Make your own lasagna. I've, I found yesterday that just a thing of sausage from the grocery store has a lot of flavor in it. Yeah, you can do this, folks. You can do this. So plant, get in the kitchen and start making dinner. I started yesterday afternoon around one o'clock. I got the pasta cooked. I started cooking the sauce. And it was it was beautiful. I had a sink full of hot soapy water. I didn't have a huge mess. Y'all can do this. Having that stocked pantry is going to give you such a relief when you're caught in a situation where you can't get out to the store or you don't even want to go to the store because of all the bad things that are happening. I mean, I watched some hooligans take over a Chinese restaurant in Queens on video. What is... They would have fed them. So y'all, make a plan. Stick with it. Be consistent. It's the consistency of decluttering every day. You know, getting a few cans of food in the house. Maybe you you make a run to the Dollar Tree and you got ten dollars to spend. Ten dollars. Yeah. Do a gather up all your change and go spend it that you've stashed everywhere. Do, do couch diving and gather up some change. You're going to be so surprised at what you can do when you just start taking care of things. It's planning for the future. Planning for the future. I watched Patera yesterday, Appalachian Homestead. Um, she made cornbread. 
and she made it from dried corn that she had grown in her garden last last summer. And she had set, she had dried it, she had hulled it from the corn from the cob, and she got this grinder and she ground it three times. And she made the prettiest pan of cornbread I've ever seen. And she cheated. And she said she cheated. She took a little piece of parchment paper and put it in the bottom of her iron skillet. Now, she heated her iron skillet up like she should. She put the parchment paper in there. And, you know, that that pone of cornbread my granny used to say just flipped right out of that skillet. Clean and easy. I love it. I have a little pan that I cook eggs in, but I also make my cornbread in because it's just me and Robert. And he doesn't like cornbread, so it's just me. But you can take that leftover cornbread and you can turn it into cornbread stuffing. I mean, corn cornbread for making dressing. You can do a lot of things with it. But this was homemade cornbread with her own corn. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, folks. We've gotten through all our questions. I love y'all so much. Thank you for being here. Please share our videos. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Give us a share. Check, uh, you know, look at the little notification bell. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. Y'all, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. And the best way to save money right now is to learn how to cook. And you have the University of YouTube to teach you how to cook. And there are people like Pam, uh, Cooking with Pam and Patera and lots of others on there that cook. They, they even teach you how to fix things. You know, if you got a broken washer and you can't afford to buy, get a repairman in, get your model number of your washer and the make of your washer and and what it's doing and do a search on YouTube and you'll find a way to fix it. I've walked a lot of people through those things. So y'all be good, kind, and sweet. Be good to yourself by, by learning how to cook simple things. Not fancy food. Not fancy food. Chicken and rice and and just, just some simple things to get food in those tummies. Buy the staples. Oatmeal, rice, flour, cornmeal. You might have to put the flour and cornmeal in the freezer and even the beans in the freezer for a couple of days. But this is a great way to get started. You can do it. And if you're homeschooling, this is going to help you save money to buy your curriculum. I know Mr. Andrew Pudua, he saw me at a conference one time and he came over to our booth and it says, are you living in chaos above it? And he said, would you do something for me? He said, teach them how to cook. They don't know how to cook. They buy these packaged meals and they don't even know how to make a pot of rice. You know, that pot of rice goes a long way. Leftover rice can be made to, it, it stretches a meal, stuffed peppers and all kinds of things. You put a little hamburger meat with that rice or you learn how to make Spanish rice. There's lots of dishes with rice. You just got to jump in and try. Give it the fly lady try. Don't be afraid to turn on the stove. But don't cook on high unless you're boiling a pot of water. And then you need to set a timer. Y'all, y'all are bragging on my hair, and all I did was pull it back because it was driving me nuts. Oh, somebody made a donation on YouTube. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Y'all are so sweet. Anyway, be good to yourself by learning how to cook, because when you're when you're experienced in the kitchen. You don't mind getting in there. 
be kind to others by helping helping a younger person learn how to cook if you know how to cook and let the joy and the sweetness that is in your heart show the world who you are a child of the most high the only living god in the universe i love you all I will catch you at three o'clock this afternoon. Who knows what we're going to talk about? We never know. Justin always asks me, well, what you talking about at tea time? I said, I don't step on God's toes. I'll, I'll Something will come up and I'll know what to say. I love you all. Be good, kind, and sweet, and I'll catch you later.